There you Jonah go. chapter 4. Finish up this little story about Jonah this morning. And uh, <coughs> we know that God sent a Jewish boy to a wicked Gentile nation. Right. Brother Bogan. Yes. To preach a message. Preach his message. Amen. Amen. And uh, we know that Jonah didn't necessarily want to go, but God redirected him, didn't he? Yes. Amen. Ultimately, God's going to get his way. Right. Whether he uses you or your buddy next to you, he's going to get the, his will done. Amen. Right. But the one thing about our God, Chris Target, <coughs> he gives us a free will. Amen. Wow. To choose to be yeah. obedient or disobedient. Right. And we're going to be awarded justly for that right. too. Amen. Absolutely right. But here we see that Jonah went and he preached. And he said in the last verse there in chapter 13, and God saw their works and turned, and he and they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil, and he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. So Jonah preached, get right or get God. Yeah. Right. Amen. That's what he said. He said, in 40 days, if y'all don't repent, you're going to deal with the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now you repent it. Amen. And God's always been a long suffering and merciful God. Amen. 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 Uh, God is not slack concerning his promise, yeah, as right. some men count slackness. Right. Amen. But he, let's go over and read that verse. I like that verse. 2 Peter chapter 3. Thanks, verse 9. But he's long-suffering towards us. Where's that? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, were not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen? Amen. God, in, in, in the Old Testament, now this is an Old Testament saying, Brother Bogan, it says that their wickedness came up before him. Yep. Yes. Amen. Y'all heard that term? Sure. And you've even heard it said, God repented there. And you've even heard this in the Old Testament, that, that God repented that he even made man. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. And, and, but here God desires repentance, a turning away from. What was he? he it said he repented from the mm. evil thoughts that he was going to do to the Ninevites. Yeah. What does that mean? He turned away. Amen. Amen. He had a change of direction, a change of mind. He was going to destroy them people. But their repentance turned away the wrath of God. Right. They put on sackcloth and ashes and even got their cattle. Amen. Now, Daddy and Casey, we live in the greatest time to ever live. Yeah. I mean, hey, I, we live in the greatest country. We live in the greatest time. Well, I love the modern conveniences. Daniel Casey is passionate about things that were necessary hundreds of years ago. That's his passion, ain't it, Chell? But Daniel Casey was glad this morning when he walked over to the light switch and flipped it and the lights came on. Hey, amen? amen? He was proud when he climbed into his rig that <coughs> time he started this morning, amen? Yeah. But we, we live in a great time, but spiritually we live in the greatest time. We live in this dispensation of grace. Amen. 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 We don't live under the law. Nope. Oh, God. listen. You just think if you took me and Daniel Casey and we're being mm -hmm. unused to grace and you threw us under the law. Living under the law was like picking fly poop out of black pepper. It was hard to do. But here we've been given grace. Amen. And we've been given it abundantly. Amen. Amen. And I, I'm so glad that we got grace. Amen. And I ain't living under the law. It would have been hard to do. I'm glad I ain't a Gentile in the Old Testament. Yeah. You know how many few Gentiles got saved in the Old Testament? There weren't very many of them. Very few. And uh, I'm just glad that we live in this age of grace. And, and it wasn't the man. He preached a simple message. Yeah. Andrew Bowden. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm sure that, and he probably, he, it wasn't wholehearted, I don't believe. We're going to see in this chapter 4. But I want you to turn to Isaiah 55, Andrew Bowen. 
Listen, it's not about the man, it's about the message. Right, right. A person can get up here in a $5,000 Armani suit and preach a message, and it don't matter if a guy got up there and preached in a t-shirt. It's not about the man. Right. You understand? Right, it's man. about the message, yes, God's right. message. Right. And he tells us that his word will not come back void. And it didn't hear you. You got that verse 11, 55 verse 11. I got it. Uh, read that for us, brother. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, Amen. but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing there, whereto I sent it. Amen. Amen. It's going to accomplish what God pleases it to do. Yes. So when <laughs> preachers like Jason Sprouse and Andrew Bogan get up and they sought God. Amen. They ain't got a message off the internet, right. but they sought God, dug into that King James Bible was sitting in their lap, and God's give them something. Yep. That thing, and they get up and they pray for the power to preach Amen. it, and they preach that. That Amen. thing's not coming back, boy. Amen. That's a promise with God. Yes. And we've already we've already learned that God's not slack concerning His promise. Amen. 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 There's going to be some damage done. Amen. Amen. One way or another. That word's going to do something. It's going to accomplish what God wants it to do. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm not saying there's not powerless preachers <laughs> with powerless sermons because they stole it from somebody. They ain't put no prayer into it. They've not sought God uh, for that message. Amen. But God's word will not come back for them. Right. But anyway, we see here in, in, in chapter 4, uh, verse 1, it says, so Jonah, he's, he's set back and he's looking to see what's going to happen. It, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou, was a, thou art a gracious God and a merciful God. Uh, slow to anger and of great kindness and repentest thee of the evil. Amen. So Jonah, he preached God's word. Chels, he went outside the city there to see what was going to happen to him. Right. And here he's talking to God. It said it, it, it displeased Jonah. And he prayed. He said, Lord, I knew that you was going to forgive them if they repented. He said, because you're gracious and you're merciful. And Jonah, being a Jew, and his arch enemy, the Assyrians, he wanted to see them destroyed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Just think about it this way. If this was 1945, mm -hmm. how many people in here would stand up and pray for Germans? Yeah. You're right. Mm -hmm. Or show kindness to Germans? This was a Jewish boy had to go and preach to this arch enemy. Yeah. Amen? But anyway, we'll go on. Therefore now, O Lord, take out the seed steam my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Oh my goodness. John was ready to give up, ain't he? Ready to die. He said, Lord, I, I, I'm ready to take me. Amen? Mm -hmm. And listen, the life of a prophet was hard. I'm going to say a pretty hard lie. Yeah. Jonah's not the first uh, prophet I've heard pray this. Right. You remember Elijah? 1 Kings chapter 18, they had a contest on the map. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, Patrick? Yeah. Yeah. And boy, God sent fire down. When Elijah called to his God, he showed up. Yeah. Sent fire down. They killed those 450 prophets of Baal, 400 prophets of the gold, uh, uh, of the grove, whatever it was. But in the next chapter, yeah. you hear old Jezebel say, tell that prophet Elijah what happened to these prophets of the Baal, prophets of the grove, going to happen to him tomorrow. Yeah. And old Elijah took off, yeah. running, scared, and he wound up under a juniper tree. Yeah. And you know what he said? He said, Lord, I'm ready to die. Just go ahead and take my life from me. But the angel of the Lord woke him up and said, son, Arise, eat and drink. And there was a cold, there was a 
cake baking on the coals, and the, it says there was a cruise of water about his head up there. Yeah. Yeah. So he fell back to sleep, and yeah. the Lord shook him one more time, said, Arise, eat and drink. Yeah. And there was food and drink there, and he said, This is going to have to last you for 40 days. Remember, and he wound up in a cave. Mm -hmm. Now he is wanting to die. If the Lord would have took him out right then, he wouldn't have got them to uh, witness this. Remember? And the whirlwind came, you yeah. know, Jason, yeah. and the fire and the earthquake, yeah. and the Lord wasn't in any of that. Yep. But Elijah heard a smil still small voice. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. This was a prophet that was ready to die. So I'm saying that being a prophet was pretty tough job. Yeah. Can you imagine Jeremiah? Right. He's called the weeping prophet. Yeah. Almost everything he preached and taught was doom and gloom towards the Israelite nation. Yep. Mm -hmm. He loved those people. And then he wrote that book of Lamentation. Mm -hmm. He lamented. Man. It was a rough life. Man. Being a preacher ain't all fame, blame, and glory. Go ahead. Wealth and prosperity. Ain't everybody flying around in million dollar jets like Benny Hinn right. and Joe Osteen. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. The true preachers are beating the, their wheels on the ground and going out and getting by by the grace of God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But here, notice here in verse number four, I will talk about this in just a second. Then said the Lord, Dost thou well to be angry? And when I first read that all for several years of my life, I said, The Lord said, All right, gentlemen, it's okay to be angry. But you notice the punctuation behind that. He's going. He's not making an a, a announcement. He's asking a question. He's going, does thou well to be angry, gentlemen? Amen. Is this doing you any good to be angry? The Holy Ghost ever do that to you? Listen, I've got to face up. Can I be real with y'all people? Me and Brady was putting a deer stand up Friday, Friday I think, and sometimes we give in to our anger faster than we give in to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> so, you know, I had one of them ladder stands, and you men I know what I'm talking about. You lay them up, then there's this cross brace that goes to the tree, and you suck it in to stabilize it to the tree yeah. after you get it strapped on and everything. So. We got to stand up, and I'm pulling on it like this, Daniel Casey, and I told Brady, I said, pull on that rope, get it tight. Well, he pulled on it, that 250 he put on it, snapped it. Yeah. <laughs> and when it, the rope broke, guess what? The ladder jerked back, and that cross beam falls and hits old dad right in the top of the head. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I see those little birds like on the car, Dad. It brought blood. I felt like it. it brought blood. And Dad got mad because Brady's rolling. <laughs> and I don't know what I said. I don't believe I said everything he said I said. <laughs> but anger, Jason, took over before the Holy Spirit. Because on the ride home, I felt bad. Yeah, that's right. I, don't, I shouldn't have said that to Brady. He was just doing what I told him to do. But y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes. That's the same way I felt when I hit myself in the head with your post driver, and you laughed like that. Yeah. That's my thing. It's funny, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of times we react to anger, then we faster than we let the Holy Spirit work on us. <laughs> and the Lord was asking Jonah here, he said, Jonah, I want you to look around. This people just repented and kept me from destroying them. Does that well to be angry? You got something to say, Chris? Yeah, sometimes we can say something to somebody thinking that we're right, you know. And there was a brother we was who was going on petty team and we was having breakfast in Conway, and this brother come at me with the Bible and come at me with his literature, but it wasn't the King James. And I was a little harsh with this man, you know, and I told him I didn't want no part of it, basically. And I could have gone about it a different way, because I know he was trying to be a witness. Mm -hmm. 
I was under conviction on the way to Patty Jean. I heard a song, and I don't remember the name of the song, but I, it brought me to tears because, you know, we sometimes we get, if we don't let the Lord lead, we can get a little out of control. Yeah, that's right. You know, yeah, Jesus yeah. was meek. He was power under control. Yeah. So if we're going to correct somebody, we need to be meek. Yeah. We do. It's hard to do sometimes. I mean, especially for me. I, 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 I tell you, I get angry. And sometimes it's okay. I think Jesus, he got angry when he cleared the temple. Mm -hmm. yeah. When he, and said not. Yeah, he said not, didn't he? He did that. He went in there and planted him a whip. That was premeditated, Andrew Bowden. Wow. And said, I'm going to go in there and clean out the money. But he said not. Amen. It's hard for this guy to get angry and not sin. Yeah. Also, yes, our anger takes over sometimes. Right. We don't. We're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's right. All right. So he asked him a question. Now, in verse 5, it says, So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city, and there made him a booth and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. But he already knew that the Lord was going to spare them because they repented. And, uh, and the Lord God prepared a gourd and made it come up over Jonah that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceedingly glad of the gourd. Now, when I was studying this about two weeks ago, you preachers, Patrick, listen to me. It, it showed me how God takes care of his men. Amen. 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 I, Jonah was sitting on that hillside, probably having him a little pity party. Yeah. Feeling sorry for himself because things went God's <laughs> way and not necessarily Jonah's way. Well, that's right, brother. But here God still showing grace and mercy to him. Amen. Yes, he, hey, preachers, just do, and this is easy for me to say to you guys, but just do what the Lord wants you to do. Right. Amen. And I guarantee you he'll take care of you. You might go through a little hardship, but the Lord's going to be there to prepare a goal for you. Amen. And you better be grateful for that. Amen. Right? And you better thank him for it. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. we're going to see what can happen. Jonah was happier about this gourd than he was a whole city being saved from God's wrath. Right. A gourd. Amen? Verse number seven. It says, But God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day, and it smote the gourd that it withered. Yeah. Now what was God trying to do here, Chels? He was trying to give this old preacher an attitude adjustment. Right. Right. Amen. Y'all ever got an attitude adjustment? Amen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, things right here, I thought you used to work pretty doggone good. Yeah. Uh -huh. Both ways. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, amen. You can adjust someone's attitude or you can get, get one. Amen. Right. But I'm glad that God's more gracious and merciful than that. Amen. He made this door, John Bond. Come on. And Jonah was exceedingly glad for the door. Amen. I mean a door. Man, in my granny's yard, we take him a Y'all, anybody draw gourds? Amen. And we throw them things at each other and they bust. And there was gourds coming up everywhere. <laughs> yeah. But Jonah loved this door. I mean, he was exceedingly glad for the door, Rita, after he just seen God's mercy. Amen? So God sent a worm. Amen? Cut worm. Y'all know what a cut worm is? Mm -hmm. yeah. A cut worm. Yeah, he cuts down the tomato plant. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Burkett, you don't know what a cut worm is, son. Dude. I'm a slicker. I'm so country that I ate so many turnip greens growing up. I had to wrap old socks around my ankles to keep the cut worms from getting me. <laughs> yeah. 
But anyway, a cut worm cut this gourd down. And boy, that broke old John's heart. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Not, had he forgot about the well already? Had he forgot about how good God had been to him? The chastisement of God? Mm -hmm. I mean, in God showing mercy, redirected him and giving him a second <laughs> chance. Yeah. But now he's worried about petty stuff. Yeah. And I, this hit me right between the eyes. I was poor. Yeah. I get so wrapped up in everyday life living on planet Earth. Yeah, that's yeah. Right, bro. Yeah. How I'm going to make ends meet. How I'm going to do this. Hunting and fishing, all these things. Right. They'll almost control our lives and we'll forget about the things God wants us to do. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I'm petty like that. I put my needs before what God wants me to do a lot of times. And he tells us in Matthew 6 and verse 33, Seek ye That's first right. the kingdom of God Amen. and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. But very seldom do I do that. I want to take care of self first. I want to take into my family, and I want to make sure they got this and that. I want to make sure they have a good time. They're comfortable. Amen. I want to entertain them. And I forget. I put God's wants on the back burner. Yeah. What would be good entertainment maybe is gathering the family up and go out a door knocking. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But how many of us do that? We want to go to Colton's. <laughs> Amen. Down there and, and dodge the staggering drunks. Right. In Cersei, Cersei, Arkansas. Never thought I'd hear that. You know? A restaurant serving booze in Cersei. But instead of going out and doing what God wants us to do. Amen? Mm -hmm. We think it's all right. Listen, I look around. I know there's some of us that go to revival. Some of you went to revival multiple times this week. Amen. Drive an hour, hour and a half, two hours to go listen to some of our boys preach. Yep. But if we're not careful, we'll say, oh, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. That's all right. <coughs> I went to revival, so I ain't got to pick a hitchhiker up. Yeah. Amen. Well, what if Jason had to pick that hitchhiker up? Still be a person headed for hell that ain't today. Right. Amen. We've got to, we worry about stuff that we have really no control of. God prepared the gourd, God took the gourd down. What's that saying? What did Job say? He said, naked I came into this world, and naked I leave. God giveth and God taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He's took good care of me. Amen. Brother... Brownfield, Brother Jim said this morning, he said, Thanksgiving ought to start today. Yeah. That's right. Amen. And I, I said, Amen. Thanksgiving ought to be an everyday event. That's right. what, what if God just woke up, Miss John, and said, Well, I'm not going to be merciful and gracious to John and Lonnie this morning. That's right. Well, y'all, you know what we'd be doing? This is all, we'd be planning on funeral. Yeah. If you didn't have God's mercy and grace on your life. Right. Right. But we worry about material things. Things that we can think we can achieve on our own. Amen? Yeah. He didn't. Well, let's let the Lord tell us about it. Verse 8. And it came to pass when the sun did arise that God prepared a vehement east wind. And the sun beat upon the head of Jonah, that he fainted and wished in himself to die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. Oh, goodness. Yeah. He's having a pity party again. Amen. And when the Lord changes the weather, I bet it was exceedingly hot for that time of year, don't y'all? <laughs> oh, yeah. <coughs> I bet that wind was hot. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Lord can do that. I still believe the Lord can do that. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. I still believe the Lord controls the weather. Yeah. I don't care how much hairspray you spray, Chels. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and spray it, sister. And do burn a tire. The Lord still got control of this thing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you can take over the work, warming, turn it sideways, and do whatever you want to with it. Amen. I can't get up. That's, that's that well to be angry, so. But listen, the Lord still got this thing. Yeah, amen. Amen. And I'm not saying that we don't have effect on the environment of the world. I'm sure we do. God, uh, man's messed it up ever since the beginning. Remember right. Philip's message? Yeah. Yeah. The fall of man? Sure. We've been having an effect on this thing. But God's going to restore this thing. Yeah, amen. Amen. Already do. amen. And then he's going to burn it down. That's right. Amen. amen. So those hippie tree huggers that say the world's going to burn up, say, yes, it is. The Lord's going to do it. But it's going to be at least another thousand years before that happens. Amen? Yeah, amen. And then verse number nine, it says, And God said to Jonah, Dost thou well to be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. <laughs> Boy, he's got some backbone talking to God like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We ever do that? I mean, hey, the Lord said, Jonah, does that? He's asking him a question again, right? Right. He said, "Does it well for you to be angry?" And Jonah. Now, after he done got a whipping like he got, being in the whale belly for three days and three nights, you think he'd be a little more obedient. Yeah, and a little more meek mm -hmm. and a little bit more mild mannered, Rhonda. But old Jonah was a lot like you. <laughs> you said Rhonda was hard headed. Oh, you I, heard him. <laughs> I heard him. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Yeah. <laughs> but Rhonda is hard headed. Got a head on her like a billy goat. <clears throat> but here, and listen. We need to realize when the Lord's chasing us. He chasing no Jonah, no doubt. He's been merciful and gracious to him, give him six chance. Jonah goes, and Jonah's wanting to die again. I'm looking at you, Bobby. I know all about your testimony. <laughs> but the, yeah, but the Lord is gracious. Amen. And he's long suffering. Amen. And he's merciful. Yep. And he loves us. And he's going to take care of his. Amen. You know why? Because they're his. Amen. That good shepherd over in John chapter 10, Brother Andrew, he says, I am the good shepherd. Yeah, amen. He said, when the wolf comes, the hireling, he's going to flee. But the shepherd lay down his life for the sheep. Amen. Because he's not a hireling, he's the shepherd. Amen. Them sheep belong to him. Yes, amen. Amen. And man, he's good to us. He is so good to us. And I think I lost my point. I don't even remember what my point I was trying to make was. But Jonah's angry the second time. Yeah. And Jonah, oh yeah, the point I was going to make is, it's almost like he was back talking the Lord here, yeah. does it? Yeah. Do y'all yeah. not get that? Yeah, yeah Lord, <laughs> it's doing me good to be angry. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. There's, my, there's the mercy and long suffering of God. Yeah. Amen. He lost his gourd for real right there, didn't he? Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that woman loses her gourd, we don't lose her God. Amen. That's exactly right. Amen. Amen. If, listen, if my son would have talked to me like that, I'd lost my gourd. Yeah. Amen. And he'd been picking himself up off the turf. And, but I'm glad God's merciful. He, he deals with us justly. And right, you know how God deals with us, Dusty? Righteously. Amen. He does it right. And God said to Jonah, Dost thou well be angry for the gourd? And he said, I do well to be angry even unto death. Then listen here. What the Lord said. Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the gourd, for the which thou hast not labored, neither madest it grow, which came up in a night, 
and perished in the night. That's right. Now, <clears throat> gourds are fast growers. No doubt. Amen. Y'all know a grow, gourd grow quick. Yeah. But I've never seen one grow that much in a night. No. That would make shade for a person. And then no cutworm cut it down and it it wilted it and was gone in a day. Yeah. Amen. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. He he can do that. But the Lord's saying, You had pity on that gourd that was a picture of my grace. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. it, it was God's grace. Jonah didn't do anything to deserve that gourd. It was the unmerited favor of God. Right. That he gave him some relief. Amen. Mm -hmm. But the Lord, Jonah's attitude caused the Lord to, to leave. Remember Paul when he had that thorn in the flesh? Mm -hmm. And it was hindering him. I believe it actually hindered his ministry, Jason. Yeah. And, and he prayed how many times? Thrice. Thrice. Thrice to have that thorn removed, right? Well. But the God's answer was what? My grace is sufficient for thee. My grace is sufficient for thee. Amen. I do not ever want to take the grace of God for granted. Sir, God's been gracious to you and big boy there. I mean, if y'all realize it or not, he blessed you with twins. Well, you didn't know if you was ever going to have any more youngins. You had youngins when you didn't know if you had. You got three of them now. God's grace has been sufficient to you thrice. Amen. We don't want to ever take that for granted, do we? I don't want to ever talk to God in a way. But if we don't, I catch myself praying in a way that I probably should. Amen. Y'all ever do that? I mean, first of all, <laughs> <laughs> we, we ought to pray for others. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. I'll find myself praying for myself and forget about everybody else. Amen. Amen. We shouldn't do that. We shouldn't take God's grace for granted. But here, the Lord's going to teach John a lesson. I hope he does here. He said, I've had pity on the gourd and you didn't do a thing to deserve it. I made it grow and I took it away. In verse 11. And should I not spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? Okay. Jonah is throwing a fit about a gourd. He's worried about it. He's He's got so down in the dumps, he's saying, Lord, just go ahead and kill me. Yeah. Over a gourd. Mm -hmm. right. And the Lord says, Jonah, you tore up about this, but you don't give a rip about 120,000 people that I've spared that can't tell their right hand from their left. Yep. You know who can't tell their right hand from their left in here? Hey, Elisha, hold up your right hand. <laughs> Thank you, son. <laughs> Some little guys, Dusty. John was tore up over a gourd when God just spared 120,000 little guys. Yeah, spared your yeah. life. About to wipe them out. Amen. We get our priorities are all messed up. Yeah. Yeah. What if Jason would have been in big? I don't know. I'm just going. I'm going to take you thunder, Jason. Jason picked up a hitchhiker and led him to the Lord. Amen. 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 Got glorious saved. Yeah. Well, what if Jason would have been in too much of a hurry? Yeah. And it'd be all about Jason. He had to get home. Him and his wife were going to go out. Which they never get to do that. Amen. But we got to put others' thoughts before our own. And that's what Jonah, and I can't, this is what, the whole story of Jonah is this is what I get out of it more than anything, man. 
Jonah didn't want to go. <coughs> Jonah didn't like the result that God gave. Jonah threw such a pity party that he wanted to die. But God was still merciful to Jonah. Amen. Yeah. He was still good to Jonah. And we know that the sick, Avery, it said he was fair much cattle. Putting that, that ash, uh, them ashes and sackcloth on the cows helped, didn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. They got in too, amen. And they got right. But, you know, if you read on a couple of books over, you'll get to a little book called Nahum. Mm -hmm. And there was a great revival here. The king repented. Yeah. Everybody repented. God spared this great city, but it wasn't very long, Patty, till they were back to their wicked ways. Because in Nahum chapter 3, I believe it is, is all about the destruction of Nineveh. And Nineveh, if you go back and read historical accounts, 612 B.C., she was laid waste. Just like God said, Brother Jason, in that by the prophet Nahum. Amen. There was probably a new generation that was brought up that forgot about the great revival that <clears throat> Nineveh had. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's why we got to teach our young. Listen here. If you're not bringing your youngest to Sunday school, you need horse whipped. Amen. 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 Yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Go yeah. ahead, bro. You need horse whipped. Because, listen, that's where they get their groundwork. Yep. That one of these days they're going to play. Hey, that groundwork, that foundation's Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's that's right. Right. They ain't teach them nothing besides Jesus Christ. I'd be back there. They're laying the foundation that one of the days your kid's faith is going to stand on. Amen. Amen. We got to have them. We got to bring them to church. Let them learn, Wesley. Amen. Amen. We we can't take that. You got some grandbabies you would love to bring to church, wouldn't That's you? right. Amen. Yeah. But so the city repented. There was a great revival, but that didn't last long because Nineveh was utterly utterly destroyed because of their wickedness. Amen. Right. So listen. Get right, Patty, or get got. Amen. But I'm glad, listen, and I was telling Daniel that we live in this age of grace. Amen. And the Holy Ghost, He still convicts me and He directs me. But you know what the you know what the Lord called the Holy Ghost? The comfort. Amen. I've been given great comfort. And I've been given great grace. And I'm glad we're living in this. I'm glad. I might not have got I just barely got saved in this age of grace. Yeah, I'm 35 years old before I got right. Yeah. I've never made it under the law where my sins were rolled forward. But now, when I put my <coughs> faith in Christ Jesus, Daniel Casey, this is what happened. My sins weren't just rolled forward. They were paid for. Amen. And it says they were removed as far as the east is from the west. They got it. Amen. Amen. Thank God for grace. Amen. Amen. All right. So we finished that up. We'll pick back up Proverbs. Where are we at? Proverbs 3. Andrew Bogan, next time you're with us, you want to teach? Okay, we'll let Brother Andrew get in there. And we'll... I'll go about trying to find us another book to study, okay? Yeah, Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3. <clears throat> we'll pick that up. Proverbs be our fill in, okay? In between things. We'll, we'll get a proverb or two. All right. Anybody got anything to say? God been merciful to you like you was, Jonah? Amen. 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 <clears throat> we need a revival like they had at Denver, don't we? Yeah, yeah we do. Amen. All right. Well, let's be, uh, Matt, Miss Dismiss us with the Heavenly Father, God, Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to come out here today, God.
Lord, I thank you for a teacher that we have that gets in the Word of God and meets up with you and gets what you have for us, Lord. Thank you for that, God. Thank you for this church and what it stands on, God. Lord, I just ask, God, that you'd come down here this morning, Lord, and that you'd meet with us in this place, God. Lord, that you'd convict the lost, God, and you'd convict the saved alike, Lord. And Lord, help the lost to get saved and help the saved to get right, God. Lord, I sure love you, and I thank you for all that you do for us, God. And Lord, I just pray today, God, that you pour your spirit out in this place, God. And Lord, we just want to meet with you. It's all in vain unless you'll come down, God. And Lord, thank you for your word, God. Thank you for your promises, God. We're holding on to them this morning, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.